So one day in June 2010, I found myself hanging out in a hotel hallway with the most powerful people in the world. I was working for the Canadian government at the G20 Summit of World Leaders in Toronto, and I had just escorted the Prime Minister of Japan to a meeting. And so I was waiting for the meeting to end outside the conference room, catching up on some emails. And out of the corner of my eye, I saw someone walking towards me. So I looked up to see, looked back, and did double take. Because there, walking towards me, was the most famous man in the world. There, walking towards me, was the most powerful man in the world. Barack Obama, President Obama, was walking towards me. Wow. <laughs> and so I stood there, and as he walked by his entourage, he gave me a little nod and continued on. That was cool. I got a nod and eye contact from the most powerful man in the world. Great. That was one of the highlights of my careers working in government. Amazing. Then, one week later, I was back to my regular government job. Back to reality. Long meetings, long emails, long report writing, and more long meetings. It's a little bit boring compared to the week before. The week before, I had been rubbing shoulders with kings, presidents, prime ministers. I had been riding in motorcades. I had been whispering to the hidden radio in my sleeve. I had a special moment with the most powerful man in the world. And now I was back to Excel spreadsheets, long meetings, and the regular gray life of a bureaucrat. That was a bit of a come down. At that point, I'd been working in the Canadian government for 20 years, and I had a good, comfortable job with good people at the Defense Department. And I had thought I'd spend the next 20 years working in government. But after that G20 experience, I realized something had changed. I don't think I wanted another 20 years of spreadsheets and meetings and gray. I thought it was time to change. And that's when I began to have some dangerous thoughts. That's when I began to think about what had previously been unthinkable to me as a government worker. I began to think about quitting my job and taking my career into a new direction. So I'd like to share something with you today, but I must warn you, this talk is very, very dangerous. <laughs> because I'm going to share with you why you're probably in the wrong job. I'm going to share with you how to take your career in a new direction. I'm going to share with you why you might want to or probably should quit your current job. So like I said, this is a dangerous talk. So how do we do this? How do we take control of our career and turn it in a new direction? Well, to help me with my career dilemma, I came up with this chart. This can explain any point on anyone's career journey in terms of high-low passion for the job and high-low skill at the job. Look at this chart. Think about where do you want to be in your current job. Well, most of us want to be at the top right. We want to be at what we call the sunshine spot. We want to be doing a job where we have high passion and high skill. We want to be bringing value to others and making other people happy in the sunshine spot. Now, how many of us, though, are actually in that sunshine spot? Most of us begin our careers at the top left, at what I call the clumsy cheerleader. You begin your career with high passion, but low skill. Maybe you're fresh at a university, but you're very enthusiastic and passionate. The future looks bright for you. And over time, we know our skill will get better. We drop things now, we fall down a lot, but we know our skill will get better as time improves. And over time, our skill does get better. But what happens to our passion at that time? Our passion goes down. Our skill improves, but our passion drops. We go from being the clumsy cheerleader to being the gray bureaucrat. And literally, I was the gray bureaucrat in my job in the government. Even the carpet in my office was gray. <laughs> and it's not just me that this happened to you. It's probably it happened to you also. According to polling company Gallup, globally, 63% of all workers are not engaged in their job. 63% of workers globally lack passion, enthusiasm, and motivation for their job. And in some countries, that number is even higher. In Japan, it's 69%. 69% of Japanese workers are not motivated and lack passion in their job. We have about 120 people in this room, so about 80 of you are like this. You lack passion, you lack motivation, you lack enthusiasm for your job. And if you're a student now, Sorry. In about five years, this will be you. <laughs> Congratulations. So 
what can we do about this? How can we avoid the sorry fate? And how can we avoid being the great bureaucrat? Well, it is possible because I did it. I acted. I took control to change the direction of my career. In 2011, after 21 years, I left my job working in the Canadian government. And I came here to Japan, where I now have two new careers, managing global HR projects at the headquarters of a major Japanese multinational and teaching MBA students at a business school. So I made the change. I acted. I took my control. I took control of my future and turned it in a direction. I pivoted. I turned my career into a new direction. And what I want to share is that basically how all of us can do this, how any of us can do this and take control of our career and do something that we want, driven by passion, and put all of us in that sunshine spot. I'll share how I did it and how some other people have done this. This is Ben Fountain. Ben was a lawyer in Dallas, working in real estate law. He was successful at his job, he had a bright future, but Ben was not necessarily satisfied with being a lawyer. You see, Ben wanted to be a writer. Ben wanted to write fiction. That's where his passion was. So what did Ben do about it? He quit. He quit being a lawyer and began writing every day. He moved his career into a new direction by doing something that was being driven by his passion. So Ben had done this. Ben had gone back to being the clumsy cheerleader. Ben had started a new career driven by that passion. Of course, he wasn't successful right away. It took time because he had to build up his skill. But Ben was persistent. He was driven by his passion to every day get better and better at writing. And so was Ben successful. It took time, but in 2006, a collection of his short stories was published. It was a huge critical hit. It was a bestseller. It won awards. Ben had succeeded. Ben had fully pivoted his career and was now in that sunshine spot. He was in a new career where he was bringing value to others by demonstrating his high skill and high passion. Great for Ben. How long did it take Ben to make that pivot? He quit being a lawyer when he was 30 years old. His writing breakthrough came when he was 48 years old. So this pivot took 18 years. Now, some of us may not have Ben's patience. We want to move our career in a new direction driven by passion, but we don't want to take 18 years to do it. So here's the way to do this more quickly. Let me introduce you to Justine Bateman. Justine entered UCLA to study computer science at the age of 48. And that's impressive for anyone to make. But this is more interesting if you know Justine's career path. If you watched American TV in the 1980s, you'd be very familiar with Justine Bateman because she was one of the stars of Family Ties, one of the big hit shows of the 80s. So how did she go from Hollywood to being a computer science student in her late 40s? Well, working in entertainment, she moved into digital entertainment and digital media, and she realized that her passion was to launch her own digital entertainment business. So that was what putting her as a clumsy cheerleader spot. But she lacked the skills, so naturally, she went back to school. She entered UCLA at 48 to study computer science to develop the skills to make her jump that gap from clumsy cheerleader to sunshine and to let her realize her dream of being a, an entrepreneur. So how can any of us do this? How can any of us make this pivot and take our career in a new direction? Well, I'd like to share with you simple steps that I figured out to help me with my career pivot. This also explains the stories of Justine Bateman and Ben Fountain. I think this can work for any of us. Just three steps. You need to get self-absorbed. You need to stretch yourself and make your own luck. These are the three steps that will help you successfully make a career pivot. And again, this worked for me. I figured this out in hindsight, but it will work for anyone. The first step, get self-absorbed. Usually we're told, don't be so self-absorbed. I'm telling you, be self-absorbed. Because you need to figure out what is your passion, what puts you in that clumsy cheerleader spot. Some of you may know what your passion is, but most of us may not, and I did not. So you need to get self-absorbed and do some self-analysis. Go somewhere quiet, relaxing, inspiring. Sit down with a pen and paper and write out your past story. Write out in your life what Activities are things got you energized, got you motivated, gave you passion. And through looking through all those past events in your job and outside, look for commonalities and trends and patterns. And from that, get a sense of the essence of what is your core that makes you passionate and gives you energy and motivation. And don't just do this by yourself. Engage others. It's a team activity. Talk to your friends, your family, your coworkers. Ask them, when I talk, what is it that makes my eyes sparkle? 
that makes me shine, that gives me energy and gets you excited, that's a great clue as to where your passion is and the clumsy cheerleader is for you. So what did I learn by doing this first step? Well, I looked over my past, I talked to others, and I realized I liked things in the past such as developing business partnerships, working cross-culturally with people from different countries, teaching, training, giving presentations, and just networking and meeting people. And through all of that, I found a common element, which was connecting and making connections. Great, so I find my clumsy cheerleader is connecting, is making connections. So that's what I had a sense of my core passion is for. So you'll have a sense by doing this of where you want to go with your future career. And once you know where you want to go, you'll know what you need to do to get there, which takes us to the second step, bridging that gap in skills between the clumsy cheerleader and the sunshine spot. It's now time to be a student again, regardless of your age. Stretch yourself, learn, upgrade your skills, develop yourself with everything you need to do to take you into that sunshine spot. Do you need to practice and write every day, like Ben Fountain did? Do you need to go back to school at, at late 48, like Justine Bateman? Figure out what you need to do to upgrade your skills, to move you in the direction that you want to go. And while you're doing this, you also need to be building a new network, stretching yourself by getting out to meet new people who can be your mentors, your advisors, your teachers, but maybe more critically, a new network that can help you in your career move. Meet people who, who are in the field you want to work at. Engage them. Develop connections with that people. And build a new network that can later help you in your pivot to the final step. And how did I stretch myself? Well, I came to Japan to get my MBA. I came here in 2011 and enrolled in an MBA program. And by doing the MBA here in Japan, I got new skills and a new network. And a new network was critical to help me make my final career change. You may be wondering, why did I get my MBA in Japan, not Canada. Obvious reason is I love Japanese food. <laughs> but a more practical reason is I realize I really need to stretch myself by getting out of my comfort zone. You need to really stretch yourself by being and interacting with new people, new places, learning new skills. Stretching yourself means getting out of the familiar. The familiar, the usual, will not help you stretch. If the usual and familiar was helping you, you would already be in that sunshine spot. So stretch yourself. Stretch yourself from that gap between clumsy cheerleader to sunshine spot. And the new network you create will help you do this. And so the new network is critical for the last part. It's now time to be proactive and take control of your career future. You need to take action and make your own luck. Now make your own luck. Um, to get my current jobs in Japan, some of my friends told me, you know, you're pretty lucky. I said, why? Well, you, you've got gray hair. You don't speak Japanese very well. It's a huge jump from Canadian Defense Department to global HR in Japan. You're lucky. I said, okay, maybe a little bit, but I made my own luck. Because by doing everything I've explained so far, and especially developing that network, I was able to demonstrate to new connections my capability, my new skills, and my passion. So it's the network that you have to develop and show them what you're capable of. Get out there, raise your hand, and get noticed by your new network. Demonstrate your passion, your skills, and they can help move you into the new career direction. They can help you make that final pivot. This is a critical point. You cannot just be passive. You have to be active and take control of your future. Volunteer, give talks, lead a movement. Um, do anything to get noticed by your new network. In my case, when I was an MBA student for those two years in Tokyo, every chance I could, I got out and gave talks. I visited companies, I met business leaders, I did everything I could to expand my network. And what happened? That new network led to me getting my two new careers in Japan. So this network is critical. You need that to help you. you have to, and you have to show them what you're capable of. Showing beats saying. And by doing that, you'll be able to move into that sunshine spot finally. And so from this whole exercise, what did I discover puts me in the sunshine spot. Well, by getting self-absorbed, I realized I like making connections. I'm passionate about making connections. By getting the MBA here in Japan, I got the new network and the new skills to help move me over there. And so putting all this together, this is what I figured out. This is what I have passion for, connecting people to people and connecting people to ideas and creating value for everybody. 
This is my passion. This is what excites me very much. This is like my personal mission statement. This is what I'm doing here today, I hope. I want to connect people to ideas and people to people and create value for everyone. And I think by my two new careers in Tokyo, I'm doing that. Working in global HR lets me connect people to people. Working as a, a teacher at MBA program lets me connect people to ideas. And I hope by doing that, I'm creating value for everyone and maybe making a few people smile in the process. So smiling is important because we all need to be happy. As you can probably tell, I'm really happy to be here. I'm really happy living in Japan and having this great opportunity. If I'd stayed in Canada at my old job at the Great Bureaucrat, I never would have imagined in five years I would be working in Tokyo, I'd be teaching the business school, I would be giving a talk like this. Those great opportunities would never happen if I had not made the pivot. So all of us should think about this. We, should all we all deserve to be happy in our jobs. I mentioned at the beginning of this talk, it's a bit dangerous. I think you see now the real danger is spending 40 hours a week in a job you have no passion for. So, stretch yourself. Find out what you're capable of. Expand yourself, and driven by your passion, move yourself into that new sunshine spot. We all deserve this. We all deserve to be happy in the job we're doing. You'll be happy. The people around you will be happy. The world will be happy. Do this now, do it soon, and take action because you are never too old to pivot. Thank you for your time today.